Welcome Wargamers, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff, and today we're going to be talking about One Page Rules. One Page Rules is a fascinating company that I have like had the privilege of chatting with a couple times. I'm one of their patrons on Patreon. Uh, I fully support them and I love what they're doing. They have their own rule sets for games, like they're much more straightforward variants of games like a fantasy battles game like Age of Sigmar or a dark fantasy future like 40k. But there's actually a lot more going on to their company, so what we're going to do is in this video is introduce you to one page rules as a company and then also as a literal series of games that are one page uh, for your faction and then we're going to move into talking about the actual rule set because me and my buddy rob played four games of the age of fantasy skirmish so they're totally not warcry variant and uh, we had a wonderful time and so i wanted to talk about that because we did do a lot of learning when it came to um deciphering the rules, understanding them, and then how that affects list building, kind of our mentalities of wargaming. Okay, so to start, what is One Page Rules? It is a company that is twofold, okay? They basically run a Patreon that you can subscribe to monthly, and if you subscribe to Tier 1, you get some extra game benefits. We'll talk about those in a second. Uh, tier 2, however, is that they have an incredible group of artists who produce these wonderfully made, designed, rather, um, armies that if you have a 3D printer at home, you can crank these suckers out. It's a sub subscription service to their designs, which is a really cool business. And so that's tier two to get that. Tier one, it kind of coincides with sort of their, their freebie. The freebie in this case are rules for entire game systems. Like I mentioned before, there's a 40K variant in Age of Sigmar one. There's also a, uh, what is the name of that one? Battlefleet Gothic, that's what it is. And so they make their own rule systems. Now, a lot of these are, are very similar. They kind of designed one game engine and then applied it in various different settings and formats tweaking the rules to make them feel a bit more you know fantasy or a bit more sci-fi uh, which is a thing that I love now when I first you know really bumped into the company they actually like many many months ago reached out to me and asked if I would do a video about them at the time things were going really crazy for me and so to my own shame I very much ghosted <laughs> the poor team uh, I believe it's I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry get no um, the games designer and so I felt terrible um, so I'm just doing Doing this this is this is just me this has nothing to do with them but regardless uh, I have been a paying patron on their patreon and I just really enjoy kind of the tenor of it when you get into their discord there's a wonderful community built around these games like I said they are simple but they also have a great deal of tactical depth because they basically do stuff like have universal keywords um, just kind of vague archetypes of like orc big orc you know and you can use Iron Jaws or old fantasy orcs or whatever, you know, so you can kind of assign what each unit is. Because these are, at their core, miniature agnostic games, they just happen to, faction design-wise, coincide with a lot of things that Games Workshop has going on. If you want to see a video talking about the 40k side of things, uh, I believe it's Uncle Adam has a, uh, a wonderful take on that one. I know that's his preferred thing. We're going to try that here locally here pretty soon. Uh, but for our foray into one-page rules, me and my buddy Rob tried uh, Age of Fantasy Skirmish. And so at this point, I'm just going to start throwing up some B-roll of images that I took during those games. Um, really, it when, I says, when it says one-page rules, it's a bit deceptive. The actual rule book for the game is like 17 or something like that maximum, I think. Uh, so it's, it's not a ton of information anyway. There are a lot of pictures and diagrams to help explain things. It's not complicated at all. It's actually a very simple and straightforward rule set. Um, we maybe used like three-fourths of the rules, because some of them have to do with with like special kinds of cannons and firing and that kind of stuff and, and we just didn't have those models so we got a whole bunch of minis we kind of used if, if you're a patron you get access to a list builder so me and robbie built lists and he brought his undead and i had my savage orcs or bone splitters in aos and so i brought them and uh, we basically duked it out at i believe a 250 point level game which for their skirmish variant i think is what they recommend at least for demos. What is accurate about one page rules though is that your entire faction is on one piece of paper printed front and back. So it's kind of like two, it's a little bit of a little sly entry there, but you get an entire army on one page. It is an interesting concept. Now our first game, we our first two games, I wanna put a huge caveat on. We had fun, but I wiped the floor with Rob. <laughs> um, and the reason that we did that is because he built a list that had like two vampire lords on, on horseback or, you know, undead horseback and a bunch of wolves. And the idea was it was like a thematic hunting party, which I was super into the, the theme of that. Heck yeah, dude. 
What we learn though is that the real basis of the game is centered around units that have up to three models each, which are basic troops, uh, or heroes which have a rule called tough, meaning they can take up to X many wounds before they have to see if they've been stunned or hurt or killed or something like that. So why does this, why am I bringing this very specific rule up before I've explained kind of the nature of the game? The simple thing of it is, um, if you don't have enough units that can take a punch, you'll never give a punch because you'll never be around to actually deliver it. And so with not understanding that in terms of list building and how it all plans out, or pans out on the tabletop, our first two games, we kind of just scrapped because once we figured out how some of the interactions work, we're like, oh, so, you know, wolves have a purpose in this game, but it, there you can't be a troop. We have to figure something else out. Okay, no problem. We come back around the second time. Now I had to do two more games, which we did this last weekend. Had a much firmer grasp on the rules. We built lists again, and the first game, I crushed him. Now at that point, we stopped and we're like, what's going on? Okay, we got the core rules right. What is happening on the table that we can't figure out? And we determined, um, just through some chatting and, and stuff like that, the savage orc, or I think they're just called wild orcs, uh, whatever their basic savage orc is, is wildly undercosted in my opinion. It is a wrecking ball of a unit. And because model-wise it's all I had, uh, that I just, just slipped him in there without thinking about it. And as we're comparing it to some of the options in Rob's army, we're like, this is, this is un this is unseemly. <laughs> we should not be doing this. Uh, and then really what it comes down to is when you're playing, this is when I kind of back out into going to more into the core rules kind of discussion. When you're playing this game, you set up alternate activations um, or uh, alternating deployments rather. The round begins, whoever has the fewest models gets to have priority. They get to move a mini. Now you have a few different actions. You have a basic move of six inches. I believe when you can shoot afterwards, you could just shoot. You could charge, which is you get to move 12 inches and then do a combat sequence. And if you don't kill your target, you back up an inch, meaning you're not engaged and other people can charge you and so on. The thing about the bone splitters is they have this rule called scout, which I'm sure works super well in other game systems that they have when it's just literal scouts moving forward towards objectives. Uh, with Bone splitters, or not bone splitters, sorry, wild orcs, uh, giving me a pregame 12 inch move, and then I can charge another 12 after that is insanely good. And so we were we were just having a really rough time because in addition to that, my 40 point unit of wild orcs comes in with a bucket of dice in comparison to anything the undead army has. I'm gonna fast forward through this discussion. I don't wanna get into the minutia of the rules, but we, we determined after that chat that the problem unit was the the wild orc boys on foot the boar boys were fine because they don't have special rules that gives them extra attacks on the charge they still have fast movement and so we're like okay okay we got this we're reverse engineering it let's take it apart and so we we ditched the um the the wild boys on foot i went for a full pig army like i was back at vault wars and we threw it on the table and our fourth game actually ended up being one of the most fun gaming experiences I've had in a long time. This is because the game rises to the challenge of, of basically the tug of war of battle, right? I charge this unit and then I have to expect a counter charge because again, everyone can charge 12 inches flat. It's a very aggressive game that focuses on peace trading. You put your chaff up forward, your opponent comes in with that. You take whatever important thing deleted your chaff. And so you're trading positioning and all those kinds of things. So it, it works super well. Wild boys, uh, wild orcs on foot notwithstanding, the game system works super well. And so once that clicked for us, like, okay, this is a unit that's suffocatingly good, at least in this point level. Let's just ditch it and try something else, which happens with 40k as well. So Storm Drake Guard are just suffocating at any point level. Now I'm going to say this very clearly. If you are someone who the models and the painting and the community are the priority, One Page Rules is a fantastic alternative, quite frankly, to Games Workshop. You can buy your models from Games Workshop if you don't have a printer. Like that's kind of what I do because I don't want a printer and I love the models that they produce. So I would like to buy some. And then I can go to One Page Rules and have a game system that I enjoy. I'll be honest and I have been honest before before, I don't truly love the current edition of AOS. I've been honest about it before, I don't really love the current edition of AOS. It's very, very complicated in the amount of releases and stuff. It's just, it's just like drinking from a fire hydrant. So it's really nice to take the models and the visuals that I love, right? And then bring it to a game system that is so much more relaxing and so much more chill. There are still, you know, um, balanced discussions to be had. Heck, 
have a balanced discussion in the comments about Wild Boys if you're a One Page Rules fan, but I just feel like it's so nice to have a game system or a game engine that doesn't feel like it's just, I don't know, man, making my brain run on overdrive. There are special rules for units, um, obviously associated point costs, there's building list building restrictions, there's all kinds of stuff. So like it's still its own game system. It's not like it's just make em ups or whatever you want. Uh, it's, it's tight and it's cool. And I highly recommend you check it out. Now links for all their stuff is gonna be in the description down below. Go ahead and again, this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I'm just throwing it out there because I had a really fun gaming experience with my Savage Orcs that I haven't had in a long time, and I got me to take them off the shelf, which was really, really nice. For me, as someone who switches armies a lot, a lot of the reason that I do trade armies out is because if I can't get a, an enjoyable experience with those models, they lose all value to me. So with my Age of Sigmar stuff right now, there's just not a lot of Age of Sigmar players near me. And honestly, the ones who are, are tired of the rules bloat and keeping up with everything and all these crazy army builds. And there's only like two or three of us and two of them play undead. So it's kind of stagnant. Like there's all those various things. And so it's just nice to be able to take those same models, apply it to a different rule set and get enjoyment out of them in some other capacity. A brand new way to fall in love with the same old thing. Also, if you do a 3D printer, I really do recommend checking out like some of their prints. They look cool. It's just not enough for me to want to actually learn how to use a 3d printer i can barely handle youtube that's gonna be it for me friends thank you so much for hanging out with me today checking out some pictures of me gaming with my friend shout out to rob thank you so much for hanging out with me on my weekends and uh, i will catch you all in my next whatever kind of video i do next time